again everyone. I am here with some new inks and the reason why I ended up getting all of these inks is because I am currently taking a my second Jane Blundell watercolor class which is uh, about watercolor sketching and I just finished up the Mastering Watercolors course <clears throat> which I highly highly recommend was amazing. Um, I learned so many new things and it's, it was just an amazing class. And um, because I wanted to, to have something else to do with her, I signed up for her um, watercolor sketching class, which both of which are offered online now. So um, I'll try to find a link to where you can sign up for those classes if you want to. Uh, that's assuming you're into watercolor. Um, this is just sort of an explanation as to why I have all these inks. Um, the reason why I ended up getting inks is because in the sketching class, um, Jane Blundell recommended this De Atramentis document ink in urban gray. And I already have a few document inks. I have black, um, I have brown, and then I have... Um, You'll actually see it. It's a different gray, but I forget what the name of the gray is. But the gray that I have is a little blue, so um, which is fine. I mean, I, I like a good blue gray, but uh, this one is supposedly a little bit more neutral. And the only place, well, I mean, I could find it in a couple places, but some of them were out of stock. So, uh, but they did have it at Goulet Pens. So because you do have to pay shipping at Goulet Pens, I thought, well, um, Let's just throw some other inks in there too. So I got some inks that were on my wish list, which was th these two. And then this one is a new Sailor ink that, um, well actually I'm not sure how new it is, but I tried this one out because it was one of the cartridges that I got in my little bookcase cartridge set from Sailor. And I really, really love this ink. So I went ahead and got a bottle of it so that I could use it with other pens. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swatch these today and you, uh, you can see which colors I got. Oh, and I got a little sample here of one of these Sailor Ink Studios inks. Um, I had intended to get a full bottle of this particular one, but uh, they were out of the full bottle. So I got a sample and it's probably good to get a sample first anyway to see if I, I actually like it. So let's go ahead and get in here. I'm going to do the little sample actually first so that I can have that dry back here and then the rest of them will be in the front of my book with the rest of my full-size inks. I'm going to get these ink bottles off to the side a little bit and leave this one here. So I will put a link below to this uh, Traveler's Notebook where I'm keeping all of my ink samples. This is a Chic Sparrow E-Class which is no longer available but I have been really really loving it for my ink swatch uh, keeping. But I will refer you to that video below and I actually have an updated flip through which I'll put a link to below as well so you can see what the setup is and also the inks that I have in here. Uh, one, The only things that I haven't done consistently recently is to do the water soluble test with a lot of these inks. Um, this is where I'm keeping all of my sample inks and then towards the front I'm keeping all my full bottle inks. And as you can see, I have not gone through with a paintbrush with a little bit of water and tried out to see how, um, like I did with these, to see if they're water soluble or how water soluble they are. So I haven't done that consistently, so you're not gonna see that. But, um, and I'm not gonna do that today on this one, it just, I kinda like to do that all at once just because then I can, you know, just go through with the paintbrush and some water. So I do have some water off to the side here to rinse off my, uh, automatic pen which I get a lot of questions about this and it is a 3a automatic pen and I will put a well actually since I put a link to the video where I where I talk about the setup that has a link to where you can get this pen so I would I would refer you to that video if for no other reason just to look at the links that I've included there because one of them is for this pen and this is actually really great for these samples I um, I only just recently, like within the last year, maybe a little bit more, learned about this particular pen and I have been using it ever since for the swatches and it's been working great. And then this is a glass pen, which also has a link in that other video, but there's a variety of different brands of these and I don't really know like which brand is the best, but this one is by, 
oh boy, I don't know how to say that company name, Roror and Klinger, I think. Uh, I believe it's a German company, yeah, made in Germany. And this one's pretty good. Um, but I think I put a link to a different one, actually, that's a little bit easier to get on that other video. But either way, you know, just um, see which ones you like. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start out with this Sailor Ink Studio sample. So this is Sailor Ink Studio 653, and it's a beautiful reddish, deep red color. And um, I have never used it before, so this will be sort of a surprise. And I always kind of have to watch out when opening bottles here because sometimes they explode. Okay, here we go. I um, agitated it a little bit so that it would be mixed as well as it could be. This, uh, going into little sample bottles with this automatic pen generally leads to a lot of the barrel getting inky. So I'm going to, I, ha I do have some water to clean, which I'll do in between each of the samples. And then I also have a paper towel off to the side here to wipe off both the ink and the water. So let's go ahead and get in here with this one. I'm gonna try not to get it all over the sides. Let's see how successful I am with that. The problem is you have to get a certain amount on the pen. And in order to do that, you have to put it in there a little ways. And I think other people may have mentioned this, but Goulet Pens, which is where all this stuff is from, is not the most generous with their ink samples. So, oh wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's not It's not even so much a red, it's more of a deep purple, um, almost a uh, maroonish purple color. That's really beautiful. Okay, so now that I've put all the ink there with the automatic pen, I'm gonna rinse that off in my little water tub and then clean the pen off for the next sample. I like to um, make sure that, if not all, at least the majority of the ink is off of the nib before I stick it into the other bottle of ink because I don't wanna contaminate one or the other. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the writing with the glass nib pen. So yeah, this, this is a pretty skimpy sample. I had to go down pretty far to get the, the ink. So here we go, and I usually do that and a little bit of cross hatching. And then this is Sailor. Oh, and it's and it flows really well too. It says Ink Studio uh, 653. Now I'm gonna let that sit for a minute to dry. Uh, generally, I try to do all of the samples on the same page so that I don't have to wait for them to dry, but this one I wanted to take a look at. And I'll actually give you a close-up of this one. This is gorgeous. I'm actually going to see if I can find this one in a full bottle uh, at a different store because um, it really is a beautiful ink, and I think I have a lot of different pens that I think it would work well in. So, although it does seem very pigmented, just FYI, in trying to get it off this glass pen, it's been a little difficult because it seems to have stained it a little bit. All right, so let me give you a close up here. And that will buy me a little bit of time while it dries. Um, and you're actually seeing a preview of some of the other colors that I got a full bottle of. The other, two of the other inks that I have full bottles of are, is this Robert Oster Great Southern Ocean and this Noodler's Air Core Blue Black. So, you know, <laughs> this is sort of the advantage to companies to giving you a variety of samples because when you like the inks, you get them, you buy them in full bottles, so. Um, Robert Oster tends to be a fairly more expensive ink. They run 20 something a bottle. Noodlers is always really cheap. It's usually like $12 a bottle and you get a lot and they fill it up to the, to the max. Um, I, you know, the Robert Oster is pretty much the, the company that I will consistently spend larger amounts on a bottle of ink just because their colors are so beautiful and their quality is really good. And I know that when I get a bottle of their ink, it's always going to be top notch. Sailor is also pretty expensive, but you can't, like the Ink Studio bottles are in smaller bottles, which are a little bit less expensive, but you're getting less ink for it. So um, I'm gonna get that closer up. Just look, it has a beautiful sheen too, I'm, and I'm seeing some, uh, maybe a little bit of a green sheen in there in the, in the sample. I'm not seeing that so much in the writing, but it does have, some nice shading, which means you've got a little bit of variation in the saturation of the color. Um, it's just really, really pretty, and this is a color that I really, really like. I, I tend to like really deep, 
reddish purples and this is right up my alley for that reason okay so it looks like we're almost dry here I'm going to just wave it off a little bit and then I'm gonna put a blotter piece of blotter paper in between so that uh, if there is any remaining wet ink it will go onto the blotter paper instead of going onto the other page blotter paper if you're into fountain pens and ink blotter paper is an invaluable thing to have um, there's a variety of different places that you can get blotter paper the one that I'm using now is just um, this little piece here and I think I got it from um, the same place that I got my Naname Cafe Notes Tomoe River Notebooks um, I think so because I at one point I got a big batch of them and I haven't bought them in a while um, but you can also get some thicker maybe I don't know if it's higher quality this thin stuff works really well I think it has a very absorbent quality to it um, that you can get some at Goulet pens and I'm sure a lot of other pen shops I've only purchased it from I think Goulet pens jet pens and the Nana Naname cafe notes place uh, online all right so I think that's as good as we're gonna get here with that for now I'm just going to blot that a little bit there yeah and there was just a little bit and I think we're good enough to go back onto the other page here so this is the page that I'm going to put these new inks on it's already been lined out with the sharpie pen that I have here um, and I'm go going to actually put this oh so it's document fog gray is the other gray um, and like I said this one's supposed to be a little bit more neutral so we'll start with that one and I'll put it here on this page with the d other detrimentous inks oh and it looks like it's wrapped in paper inside the box here that's nice a little added security my other diatrementis inks did not come that way um, and this paper actually oh this is actually a really pretty paper to be using for collage I know I you know a lot of things that people would consider trash <laughs> I use in collage this has it has like a bunch of little speckly marks and it's also it also has a nice lightweight feel all right so I'm gonna not throw that away and put that aside for collage um, okay so let's go ahead and get in here into this document ink to urban gray the urban gray sorry okay so I can already tell that it looks a little more gray like classic gray and after I've done these samples I will again give you a close-up of these so this Oh yeah, that's very interesting. So this actually seems like a warmer gray that is leaning more brown, which um, is fine. And But I'm kind of glad that I have both because some things I don't particularly want it to be a warm tone. I'd prefer it to be a uh, cooler tone. So it's just, it's just, you know, for whatever the particular drawing or painting is that you're doing and the benefit of these document inks is that once they dry they are um, they are permanent so they will not wipe away if you're painting with watercolor over them um, so that's really helpful if you want a line that will not fuzz out when you when you paint watercolor over it okay so let's get in there with the dip pen and then this is, well, first I'm going to do the little, and I used to almost exclusively use platinum carbon black for my black, um, sorry, I cannot, I cannot write and talk. Um, I used almost exclusively platinum carbon black for my permanent black fountain pen ink. But I've noticed that the longer it's in a pen, the more gloppy it gets. And um, it also uh, takes a long time to dry. So if you're trying to sketch outdoors and try to be kind of fast about it, it's, it's not the best ink for that. And um, now that I've used this Diatrementis document ink in black a little bit more, um, Oh, I should have put document on there uh, it, it tends to dry a little faster and it tends to flow a little better so I'm just gonna put up here document it seems to be flowing really well off the pen here okay 
so there's that and now that it's drying it does indeed look a little bit more neutral I think that these four I you know I would feel I would feel like I was missing something if I did not have this fog gray um, although these are really neutral I think it's really kind of nice to have this which I would consider sort of a Payne's gray color um, and Payne's gray is one of my all-time favorite colors for pretty much all media <laughs> Okay, so two of the ones that I had showed you just now in samples, this is Great Southern o Ocean by uh, Robert Oster. And then this one is the Air Core Blue Black by Noodlers. So I will do these next. I'll do the Robert Oster first. Okay. And um, what my one complaint about Robert Oster inks is that they come in these plastic bottles that do not have a very large mouth. So it's kind of hard to get in there with things like this without getting ink all over it. Um, and you know, you, part of me thinks, well, you know, you're, I'm, I'm paying so much for this ink, like shouldn't I get a glass bottle? <laughs> but you know, it's the ink I'm paying for really and not necessarily the bottle which um, some bottles are pretty cool, but that is, not, that is not what these guys are all about. They're about beautiful ink. So that's just a beautiful, beautiful blue. And it, it leans slightly green, slightly greenish blue. Um, and these, these are actually somewhat similar, this Noodlers, but I think the Noodlers is even a little bit more green than this one, and this one is more blue. So let me go ahead with the dip pen. Whoa, I dipped a little too far there. Okay, so let's do one, two, three, four. Okay, and then this is Robert Oster. Um, oh, what's the exact color here? Great Southern Ocean. Okay, so there's that one. And like I said, I will show these to you up close so that you can see the nuances. Plus it'll be a little bit better to do that at the end anyway because the majority of these will have dried a little bit and you really can't tell exactly what your ink is gonna look like either in swatches or written until it dries fully because um, there could be some sheen that comes out that you don't see until it dries or something like that. Okay, whoa. And so this is, um, so this is great and kind of uh, unfortunate. So, <laughs> um, and that's a, a clear example right there of why that's a little bit unfortunate because oh, and it's already, that's already stuck to the table. So, whenever you get a bottle of Noodler's ink, beware because they are always very, very full which is nice in that they are uh, clearly giving you a lot of ink for your money because the Noodler's ink generally is around $12 for this size, um, which is the three ounce size. And, and it is, it's always full to the max. Uh, the problem is you could end up spilling your ink uh, while it's still so full. And uh, sometimes if you're filling a pen too, it could overflow while you're sticking the pen in the ink. So that is a minor downside to the extremely full <laughs> container. And even with this glass nibbed pen, it's, it's kind of hard to get in there because um, I don't want it to overflow. All right, one, two, three, So this is Noodler's, Noodler's, Air Core Blue Black. And I'm not really seeing the blue black here because <laughs> I think this is leaning more green than blue, personally. I mean, maybe we could call it turquoise, but, um, but I would definitely not call it blue. And I really wouldn't have known that this is a beautiful color that I like uh, if I was just looking at the name and not looking at the swatch that I had gotten. So now you may ask, <laughs> you already have swatches of these in the back. Why are you swatching them when you get the full bottle? Well, there are differences in batches 
especially when it comes to noodlers. Noodlers, their batches are very individual and there could be an issue between batches being very different. So, um, so I do like to swatch the ink again when I get a full bottle. Also, sometimes when you get the uh, little sample bottles, they've, they maybe have not shaken the bottle before they extracted that sample. So you could be getting a very dilute sample or you could, uh, as far as pigment is concerned, or you could be getting a very concentrated sample. So that's also something I keep in mind as sort of a uh, FYI when I get, when I'm looking at samples as well. Okay, so this is the Shikiori ink by Sailor in the Yamadori is the color. And it's probably very similar. I was clearly in a very blue mood when I ordered these. Um, and this one I believe has, yeah, so it has little, um, it has these little stickers that you can put on your converter so that you know what's in your converter. And then it also comes with this little booklet here, which I believe is probably all in Japanese. Um, but it shows you the collected colors, the color collection that are here. And I have been really impressed with pretty much all of Sailor's inks that I've tried. So what I don't understand is that I, I feel like they have a lot of different inks that are called Shikiori. And I don't know, I don't think they're all the same, but I don't know. So I already have Rikyu Cha. And now, so now I have this Yamadori, which I, I would call sort of a sort of a turquoise color. Um, and I believe that these are the same as my markers, but I, f I feel like they're, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I can't read Japanese and I don't, <laughs> I don't really know what they're saying a lot of the time that um, I'm just not sure. It seems like their collection seems bigger sometimes when they show it to you and seems smaller other times. So I'm, I'm not really sure. And I'm also not really sure what the relationship between these colors is and the um, the gentle, the sailor gentle inks, because I feel like there are some similar colors there, but I don't, I don't think they're the same as far as I know. I don't know. Okay. So you can see this is just a lovely, lovely blue turquoisey color. But Sailor, they're pretty good at color. I really, really like their ink colors for the most part. There are some that I feel like are kind of duds, but um, for the most part, they're all really, really beautiful. But they, all three of these are very different. So <laughs> even though they're different blues, I would say blue is probably my favorite color for a fountain pen ink. Okay, and off screen, I am just cleaning out that automatic pen to make sure that I'm not going to be leaving any of that ink in there where it can get kind of crusty. Okay, and then I'm going to do the dip pen real quick. So this is Sailor Shikiori in Oh, and I don't think it has the color name. It's Yamadori. I don't think it has that in English on the bottle itself. I might actually put one of those little labels on the actual ink bottle so that I know, so that I know what it is. Okay, so I'm just rinsing off that glass pen. So one of the unfortunate things about liking <laughs> blue ink like this is it tends to be very staining. So. Um, it does end up being a little harder to clean out of pens, but you know, it is, it is what it is. And I tend to go for a color of over ease of use. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this De Atramentis document, Urban Gray. And you can see, generally I found this to be the case that the thicker the line is off of the dip pen, the wetter the ink is and because it's flowing really fast off of that pen. And, and all of these De Atramentis inks, other than maybe the black, um, the other three generally have a thicker line here with this glass dip pen. But I think that's gonna be a really good handy color to use for, for watercolor sketching. And then here we have the Robert Ossard Great Southern Ocean, which is just beautiful. And there is a tiny bit of like sort of reddish sheen. It's very hard to see and it doesn't always show up, but you, I can, 
I definitely saw it in the sample and I'm seeing it a little bit in the Robert Oster and it may not be coming off on the channel or on the camera. So um, the Noodlers Air Core Blue Black also is a pretty thick line. I find a lot of Noodlers inked to be pretty wet. Um, and I think I did lay it down a little thick because see this sort of color here, you're, you're going to see a little bit more of that and there's a little bit of shading going on. So you're going to be able to see some of that. It's not, it's not um, mostly black like some blue blacks are. And like I said, I think this is mostly green <laughs> rather than black or rather than blue. And then here, this one dried really fast, which is kind of nice. This is the Sailor Chic Yori Yamadori. And you can see some lovely reddish sheen going on. You also have shading going on with the different saturation throughout the words. It's really, really lovely. Um, but I'm really happy with all of these new inks. Now I have some more inks to add to my pens. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I think I have probably used my entire collection of ink in at least one pen. Um, and uh, some inks I go back to again and again, but it's, it's really kind of, you know, one of the small pleasures in my life these days to look through my little sample book here for inks and try and match inks with pens and uh, that sort of thing. All right, well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that and that it was useful for you as far as seeing these particular colors. Oh, and I don't know if you can see, I, I'm really seeing more of that red uh, sort of at the outline. There's a lot of Robert Oster inks that do that, but again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just really not sure it's coming off on the camera. But anyway, feel free to subscribe so you can keep track of future videos and I hope to see you there. Uh, take care, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.